Hello, this is a video about the, the use of electrolysis to extract metals and we're going to actually look at aluminium in a lot of detail in a moment. But just as a recap, you'll remember that we have the reactivity series of metals, which we've looked at in a previous video. And we have carbon in there as well to help us understand some of the reactions. But all the metal oxides below carbon, we can react those metal oxides with carbon to extract the metal. So if we react or heat it with carbon, the metal oxide with carbon, we're going to get the metal extracted. And that's because carbon is more reactive than the metals. Gold and platinum, very unreactive. We don't need to react them with uh, carbon. They're found as they are in, in the earth. Everything above carbon is more reactive than carbon. So we cannot react it or heat it with carbon in order to extract it. The metals are too reactive and they will hold on to their oxides and therefore not be extracted. So the metal is more reactive than carbon. So we cannot use the method of heating with carbon. What we can use though is a method called electrolysis which we've um, talked about in the previous video. We've learnt about that in the previous video. But we can use electrolysis to extract those metals and the example that we're going to look at closely is that of aluminium. So aluminium comes from an ore and that's a rock containing large amounts of the metal or the metal oxide. But it comes from an ore, and that ore is called bauxite. Bauxite contains a lot of aluminium oxide. So we can use that ore to extract aluminium, which is a very useful metal. Aluminium is Al2O3, and we'll be using that in this video in a little while. So we have bauxite as our raw material that contains that aluminium oxide. Now, here's the apparatus or the equipment that's used to extract the aluminium by electrolysis. We have a steel tank. Sometimes the steel tank is lined with uh, heatproof bricks, but uh, we always have the steel tank. And lining the inside of the steel tank is the cathode, the negative electrode that's found on the inside lining of the tank. The positive electrode kind of hangs in those three different blocks in our electrolyte. And the anode is made of carbon, as is the cathode. They are both made of carbon. This kind of yellowy color substance is our aluminium oxide, but it's not just aluminium oxide, it's actually mixed with a substance called cryolite. And we'll see why that is in a moment. At the bottom there, we have our aluminium, and it's in the melted state or the molten state because it's very hot inside the tank. So aluminium is actually melted. And also we need to melt the aluminium oxide in order to carry out our electrolysis. So the key thing about aluminium oxide is that it has a very high melting point. It has a melting point over 2000 degrees. Now that would be very expensive to melt and might not make it economical to extract the aluminium, but because we have a substance called cryolite, if we mix aluminium oxide with the cryolite, that, melt, that lowers the melting point of aluminium. Sorry, lowers the melting point of aluminium oxide. Therefore, less energy is needed to melt it. Therefore, it makes it economical to use this method to extract that aluminium. So we could take a look at what actually happens at the electrodes. We know aluminium oxide is Al2O3. When that's heated, that will be broken down to aluminium ions, Al3+, and oxide ions, O2-. So at the anode, the anode is positive, so that will attract the oxide ions, the O2-, and these will then combine to form oxygen gas. And we'll see the details of that in a moment. At the cathode, the negative electrode, that's going to attract our aluminium ions, Al3+, and those will form aluminium metal. And we'll see how that happens in a moment as well. Important to point out that the whole inner lining is uh, attracts the aluminium, so as it gets attracted, as it's in melted state, it will just trickle down to the bottom and then flow out of the bottom of the tank. Also important to remember is that because the anode is made of carbon and we have oxygen produced in this reaction, the carbon in the anode will react with the oxygen and therefore a slight problem we have with this process is that the anode needs replacing often because it is broken down because of the reaction with oxygen. Okay, so let's take a slightly closer look at what, at, what, at what is happening at the anode and the cathode. We'll start off with the cathode, which is slightly simpler. 
So the cathode is the negative electrode. And what we have is the aluminium ions, which are attracted to the cathode. Aluminium ions, three plus, are attracted to the cathode. And they will pick up three electrons. They will pick up electrons to make aluminium metal. But because aluminium is three plus, aluminium ions will pick up three electrons to become aluminium metal. At the anode, we have a slightly different thing going on. We have oxide ions that are attracted. Now, these will lose electrons, so we end up with oxygen and electrons. This is not balanced. We have O2, so we need two oxide ions. And that means we will need four electrons, because two oxide ions each have a charge of two minus. We could write it in a different way. We can write it like this, O2 minus take away four electrons will give us O2 gas, and we can just go ahead and balance it as we did before. And that, was, that one seems a bit more common sense way to write it. You can write either one for the exam. At the anode, we also have the reaction of carbon with oxygen. So that is carbon reacting with oxygen, making CO2 gas. Okay, so this is the extraction of aluminium using electrolysis and the half equations that go along with the process. Thank you for watching, and I'll see you soon.